Hi, this is Katie Samuel, your favorite snow farmer. And you are welcome to my YouTube channel. Subscribe to my YouTube channel because I give a lot of gold nuggets. So make sure you have your gold nuggets on time by subscribing. And, and when you subscribe, you support the channel because the more I see subscribers go up, the more I'm encouraged to give a lot of information. So um, subscribe to this YouTube channel so you can get more information. Um, today, I want to discuss a very crucial part of snow farming and it is coming up a lot and it's exciting because you know what and i think my videos are going deep even though you guys are not subscribing so i'm at two point something k subscribers please the subscribers need to go like hundred thousand subscribers <laughs> that's just by the way but the whole point is that i i can see the content going deep and cutting across all the way through africa going to the uk to the us and i'm getting calls from all these places and I've realized that because now people are farming snails the right way, they are noticing the mistakes that go on in the snail farm or the harm that uh, uh, um, the snails encounter in snail farming. Because now the housing I am suggesting to you is is exposing things that can happen if they are in the other housing and so the the most crucial part of snow farming is after the eggs hatching the hatchlings because if you are farming uh what should i even use as an example if if you are farming let's say pigs and then you have three adult pigs that are supposed to give you piglets but then they are not uh, the piglets when they are just about a week old they die then you realize that the farm is not expanding and people who do the other snail housing uh, like the net housing or the shade house whatever they call it or the greenhouse they do not realize these mortalities in the hatchlings and that is why somebody can have that housing and be confident that everything is well but the thing is they are not noticing it but when you do the, the pen housing you will notice when there's abnormal mortalities and so because now people have become conscious people are investing in this uh, pen housing when things go wrong with the hatchlings they identify it and then they start to raise questions and it's exciting because at that point you become conscious now i want to give you answers to things you should look out for before you even start your snow farm so that your hatchlings can survive so there are key things to consider um and there are things that can affect hatchlings so you you often like recently um a, a young lady shared with me a video of her greenhouse she said the hatchlings she realized the hatchlings were dying a lot in the greenhouse so she moved all the hatchlings into a big basin or bowl and from the video i don't know if i can attach it to this video but in the video i could see thousands and thousands of snails in a bowl uh, and they had put leaves on top of them i mean fresh leaves they were eating but then from here all those thousands of snails died in the basin or bowl so uh, the first thing i'll even leave with you is that please if you realize that your hatchlings are dying in the ground please do not take them and put them in a bowl i would i would rather even prefer that you keep them in in the greenhouse because if instead of losing 100 percent of them it's better to have 10 percent of them um, even grow to a certain size is better than losing everything in a basin. So please do not do that. But I'll be mentioning point after point things to look out for so that you make sure that you can reduce the level of mortality in your hatchling snails. So point number one, be cautious of where you set up your farm. The location is key. Gone are the days where we believe that um, you can farm snails anywhere whether it's hot or cold or no it's that's not a thing be cautious of where you set up your farm and this is experience gathered over the period um in my experience in visiting farms a lot of farms i've realized that farms that were set up in rainforest zones mountainous areas thrive better than snails that are farmed in hot zones so it is possible that your hatchlings are dying because you set up your snail farm in the wrong place. It's possible that the place is so dry, 
it's so hot and it doesn't matter whether it's a net house or a greenhouse or a pen system the thing is that the area or the environment is hot the, the atmosphere is dry and so the hatchlings because they are weak they will die the, the second thing the second point is that some people build their housing and then um, when you visit you realize that when the sun falls to a certain uh, a certain location during the day or a certain direction during the day you realize that the sun is the sun rays is falling on the pen or the sun rays is, is, uh, is like you see you see this um, shade houses uh, the ones you see online you realize that some of them the vegetation gets deserted over a period because plants have expiry dates of course so at a point you realize that the soil is exposed to sunlight and the soil becomes very hot so things like that can kill, end up killing your hatchlings because they're not able to withstand that amount of heat if you're doing the pen or train system and you do not extend your roofing to the, to the level where wherever the direction the, the sun is coming from it does not fall onto the pens you will have issues because um, the walls will become very hot, generate heat, and then you realize that the pen is very hot. And then that is uncomfortable for your young snails or hatchling snails. So look out for that thing. Point number three, contaminated soil. So some people also buy soil from whatever sources. Um, some people are using cocoa peat. Uh, <laughs> cocoa peat, we have our own... Um, should I say research? We did a study on cocoa peat. We have our own reservations. I don't want to put it out. Somebody will think I'm trying to destroy their business or, <laughs> or defame somebody. So please, I will not even talk about the cocoa peat. But then um, make sure that uh, the soil you're using is not contaminated. Uh, make sure you know where the soil is coming from. If you get the soil from a place where maybe there's a factory nearby, where they put their waste out there, the waste gets onto the soil. If you put it in there, it will kill the snails. Or if you have um, other animals in the soil that can kill the snails, of course, um, they are going to die. Point number four, atmospheric humidity. Um, so if wherever you have set up your farm, the atmospheric humidity is very low. I mean, the place is very dry. You realize that the young snails their skin dries up and then they die or you would realize that just about a week or two weeks old snail or hatchling is going into estivation how it's a terrible situation so you realize that the snail is very uncomfortable and the snail would die from such uh, a situation so make sure you set up the farm in a place where the atmospheric humidity is high like this particular place it's cool, it's, uh, it's, it's 12 noon. I can see the mountains here. I can see a lot of vegetation that makes this place very cool. Even when it does not rain here, you come early in the morning, you see water droplets on leaves here. And that is a sign that the atmospheric humidity is high. And that's why our snails here, in, in where we started piloting uh, our snail farm, uh, are very comfortable. Point number five, I don't know if, yeah, point number five overcrowding make sure you are following the right snail population density if you're doing beyond what is required they will die so if you're keeping uh, 10,000 snails and that's why that's why I say that my experience cannot be bought because when we started our snail farm because we started with just 10 pens and we're piloting uh, we were not we we're not anticipating that we'll get a lot of eggs so when we got a lot of eggs and a lot of hatchlings, we were overwhelmed to the point that at a, at a point we had close to 100,000 hatchlings in one pen. That was how crazy it was. Now we realized over the period that the density was too, was terrible and uh, the snails were dying. And we learned that over a period. And that's why I advise you to pilot whatever you are doing first before you invest um, every money. So please make sure you are not doing overpopulation else of course they will die point number six 
um, the feed make sure you're giving them enough feed make sure you're not giving them contaminated feed if the feed you are giving them is contaminated they are going to die <laughs> because they are very young they are feeble they are very weak so the slightest thing kills them and that's the crucial part of snail farming if you lose your hatchlings you are not in business or if you lose your eggs you are not in business and i'm so excited people are now asking questions about how to keep your hatchlings alive so it's important um even today uh, there are snails that were born and bred in this farm uh, and then we counted them and they are the table size and so it works if if you if you know how to keep them yeah, of course you're going to be farming the snails and you'll be excited about it point number seven wind speed wind speed so another reason why i do not like the net housing or the shade housing or what you refer some people refer to as the green housing is because you cannot really control wind speed if you have a lot of vegetation yes it can block some amount of wind that is coming through uh, especially when it gets very windy well it's going to stop some amount of wind but not much um, so the skin of the hatchlings will dry up and you, this is not me saying stuff you can google it um, but when you do the penthousing because there are walls um, it's, it's it stops strong winds from you know coming into the space and drying up the skin of the snails and so you can have them alive that is another big problem you need to look out for point number eight give them calcium you would realize that the hatchlings after hatching from the from the eggs most of them eat the eggs they just hatched from and sometimes they even end up eating the eggs that are yet to hatch for calcium and it's for calcium so um the moment the moment you start uh you start realizing that that uh they have hatched you start providing them with their calcium because they need that to expand they need that to grow if they are lacking calcium they will not be able to grow and then they will die point number nine you would realize that in my farm when we put the eggs there we do not put mulch over the eggs what we do is that we put fresh leaves rather to create a mulch not the dry leaves so we use fresh leaves rather and we change it periodically um, anytime we realize it's old now the reason why we do that is because um, we want to identify that they have finally hatched and we do not want to um, find difficulty in in taking the numbers or accounting for which eggs did not hatch which hatched so we use fresh leaves and the moment we realize that there are holes in the fresh leaves it means they have hatched and they are eating and that's a very good sign so the next thing we do after we realize they have hatched is then then we bring in the dry leaves we bring in the dry leaves to 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 make the place cool and humid for them so that they do not suffer so please if you can follow these steps i think it may help you and i'm telling you what works for me if you think it doesn't work for you that's your own wahala but that this is what works for me uh and please make sure you do not handle the young hatchlings anyhow people you would see them carrying the young hatchlings throwing them pouring them they are feeble and weak and when you do that you will record high mortality anyway thank you for watching i think it's, it's becoming a lengthy video i appreciate you watching the videos share it to other people who are farming snails let them do the right thing so that they can scale up their investments uh thank you this is katie samuel bye